Hey there guys, how you doing? Uh, welcome to the 22nd installment of Cujo 06241 Sports Vlog. I am your host, Justin Crumley. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm all by myself uh, this week. Uh, Josh could not make it. I, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I, I talked to him a couple days ago, and it looks like he's... Uh, Found himself a job, so uh, so that's cool. Uh, Josh, if you see this, I know you will. Best of luck to you. Uh, he may come back next week. I don't I don't know, but uh, you will always have me. I will always be doing this, whether I'm by myself or with a guest. And without further ado, let's get started. Uh, okay, I got my laptop right here. Look at that beautiful MacBook. You don't make these anymore. That's valuable. I got this in college. Uh, anyway, Adrian Peterson was denied his appeal, and he will not play for the rest of the season. Uh, you know what? That's the way the cookie crumbles, man. Uh, I know a few weeks ago I said uh, maybe he didn't deserve the whole season, but he did. He did abuse his child, and it's just it's fucked up that. It even had to come to that, you know, and uh, by come to that, I mean how he disciplined his child. I just thought it was amazingly, it was just fucked up. It was incredibly fucked up. You know, I know that was a form of discipline back, you know, way back in the day, but it's not legal anymore. Times are different. Peterson, you're a great running back and all, but dude, you got to you gotta be a little patient. You gotta think. Times are different, man. So, uh, yeah. No more Adrian Peterson for the rest of the year. Minnesota managed pretty well without him, though. Uh, speaking of Minnesota, Detroit beat them this past Sunday. 16-14. to Detroit is back in first place in the NFC North now because the Green Bay Packers lost to the Buffalo Bills which means my Patriots are number one in the power rankings, and that is awesome. Uh, but it's really cool to see Detroit back in first place. However, guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This was not a pretty win. Minnesota took a 14-0 lead, and it looked like the Lions' offense was just, it's back to its sluggish old self, you know? It's back to its slow not scoring ways, and it took a couple of good defensive plays uh, by, excuse me, by Slay, uh, and I think Glover Quinn had an interception. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but Lions defense bailed them out this time, and uh, I'm really happy they won. But the fact that they had to come from behind, from 14 to nothing to Minnesota. It's just a bad sign, and it doesn't make me optimistic. Hopefully this wasn't Adamican Sue's last game at Ford Field. I know he's going to be a free agent this year, and I, I've heard the, the Lions aren't going to be able to bring him back. He's going to cost a lot of money, so it may not be in their best interest, but Sue is a damn good player. It's just it's hard to watch. It's going to be hard to see him go. If he goes, I'm really hoping the Lions can somehow bring him back. With that said, let's move on to a game preview. All right, Detroit is heading to Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears. I would say this should be an easy win, but after the way they played Minnesota, I just don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, I think Detroit is going to win this game, but in order to do that, they need to wake up on offense again. They need to start putting points up on the board because coming from behind is not going to work. And we've seen that. When they when they were down 14 to nothing to Arizona, that was it. Arizona didn't need to score anymore to win that game. And New England, which I was rooting for New England, I am a Patriots fan, but still, you know, they, the Lions can't fall behind too far against good teams and hope to win by playing the comeback card because it's not always going to work. And if you go into Chicago and you fall behind like, you know, 17 nothing or 21 nothing, and your offense can't score, you're not going to win. 
I'm sorry, but that's just not how it works. However, Chicago is terrible at Soldier Field. They just they're coming off of a loss to New Orleans. They lost thirty one to fifteen. I didn't think they would really win that game at all. I really didn't. Uh, but this could be a better game than what it looks like. On paper, Detroit should mop the floor with Chicago. But it's like I always say, never overlook an opponent. Because if you do that, you're digging your own grave. Okay, let's move on. The New England Patriots slaughtered the Miami Dolphins 41-13. to This was a rough start. First half didn't look so good. Tom Brady had a pick. Uh, the offense just didn't look like it was, you know, it was it was working that well. And, we, you know, Brady looked like he was falling back into that sluggish slump that he was in. But then the second half came, and bam, they put the pedal to the metal, and they just slaughtered the Dolphins. Brady had two touchdowns. He had two touchdowns. Uh, he even ran 17 yards on Miami. I think that's the longest run in his entire career. The second half, New England just looked like a new team, a better team. They destroyed Miami, and as a result, they are now the AFC East champions for a sixth time in a row. Okay, uh, last thing before I move on to baseball, a game preview for the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. Much like the Detroit-Chicago game, on paper, New England should just mop the floor with the New York Jets, but they're going to New York. I don't know what it is, but the Jets have always played New England pretty tough. So I'm not expecting New England to steamroll the Jets, but I am expecting a win. The keys to winning this game for New England are to, I guess, keep Geno Smith at bay, which shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I would say uh, keep, uh, keep forcing him to turn the ball over, which we all know Geno Smith does very well. Uh, and the offense has to uh, kick, it a, kick it in a high gear. They need to score, you know. Uh, Birdie needs to hit LaFell, hit Gronkowski, uh, Edelman, Brandon Timms, Times, however you say his name. He needs to hit all of his targets. Uh, Jonas Gray, LeGarrette Blount, and Shane Vereen, they all need to produce. Uh, the offense in general just needs to wake up. They need to kick it into high gear, and uh, they need to keep the Jets off the board which shouldn't be too hard. The Jets are not a great team at all, but like I said, they always play New England very tough. Look for this to be a better game than it looks. All right, let's get into some baseball. I have some great news for y'all. The Tigers made a trade last week. They traded Rick Porcello to the Boston Red Sox for Yohannes Cespedes and Alex Wilson, who is a right-handed relief pitcher, and a 19-year-old minor league left-hander, Gabe Spear. Gabe Spear. That's how you pronounce his name. When I first heard about this trade, my reaction was something like this. Yes! 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 I was very happy when the Tigers pulled this off. I was so ecstatic, as you could tell from that little sideshow. Uh, it's like I've been saying, the Tigers have needed a corner outfielder. And with with the AL Central, the AL Central looks like a very tough division now on paper. The Tigers aren't the only team to make a big move. The White Sox made a bunch of moves. Uh, they got David Robertson. Jeff Samarja, Melky Cabrera, and they uh, they signed Brad Penny, but Brad Penny I don't think is a is too big a deal. But then you have the Indians. The Indians got uh, they just signed a pitcher, but I, I forgot his name. Uh, if you if you guys remember the pitcher, uh, let me know in the comment section below because I just I spaced out. But the Indians uh, also added Brandon Moss uh, from Oakland, which is a huge thing. 
Uh, so the Indians made themselves better. Uh, today, or uh, the Royals, the Royals signed uh, Kendry Morales, which, whatever, big deal. That's that's not so bad. But the Royals are not a team to sleep on because they they still have the bullpen that they do, and they have a great outfield, great defensive team. These guys made it to the World Series and took it to seven games. They are definitely not something I'm about to sleep on. Last and probably least, the Twins made two moves. They got Torrey Hunter back. I love Torrey Hunter and all, but I wasn't all that mad when the Tigers let him go. He's just his outfielding was is starting to deplete. He's getting old, you know. He's 39. He's heading into his age 40 season, and guys, there was just no room for him to be on the Tigers anymore. So I'm sorry. That's, that's how it is. And then they got Irvin Santana for four years at like 50-some mil, I think, 60 mil. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong. I probably am. Uh, but, yeah, so the AL Central on paper looks like it's going to be the hardest division to compete in. And uh, luckily the Tigers not only made this move, they made another move, which I'll get to in a minute, but Yohan Cespedes... He's a lineup changer. He's a complete lineup changer. And if you don't believe me, look at the Oakland A's. Look what happened to them when they traded him uh, for Johnny Gomes and John Lester. The A's really didn't do much. In fact, they lost their lead in the AL West and ended up getting bounced in the, in the wild card round against the Royals. So, all that... Because they lost Cespedes. I think if they kept Cespedes, they would have not only kept their lead in the AL West, maybe they would have went to the World Series. Who knows? Cespedes is a lineup changer, guys. He's a great addition. I absolutely love this trade. I'm really going to miss Ricky P, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, Porcello is in the last year of his contract. So is Yohan Cespedes. The only the bad thing about this, though, is the Tigers may lose a draft pick from this because in Yohan Cespedes' contract, he's not allowed to be dealt a qualifying offer. This was this was a much-needed addition. The Tigers, like I said, have needed a corner outfielder. And uh, one with some pop in his bat, too. Cespedes, again, total lineup changer. I'm very happy with this trade. Let's move on to the next one. The Tigers have traded... Eugenio Suarez, and top pitching prospect Jonathan Crawford for right-handed pitcher Alfredo Simone. Simone wasn't a really great pitcher for uh, the Cincinnati Reds last year. He uh, he went 15-10 and 10 with a 3.44 ERA in 32 appearances. Now, that's not terrible, but his second half numbers were not very good. I don't have them pulled up. I apologize, but you know uh, it is what it is. The Tigers did need to make a move to replace Porcello, so I'm not I'm not really keen on this. But I will go into this upcoming baseball season with an open mind. Uh, I uh, I trust Dave Dombrowski. He made a good move by getting Cespedes and Alex Wilson. Let's just hope this all works out. Let's hope we finally bring home a World Series. Uh, all right, guys, I've been dreading dreading this, and that's kind of surprising because I'm a huge hockey fan. Uh, the Red Wings lost to the Maple Leafs last Wednesday, 2-1 to one in the shootout. Of course! They did end up in the lead for the Atlantic Division at that time with 40 points. Uh, they were also number one in the Eastern Conference at this time. Uh, two days later, they played the Florida Panthers. They played Florida pretty good. For a team that usually beats the Wings, they played Florida pretty good. Guess what happened? They lost in the shootout. Of course! Uh, Weiss actually left the Florida game with an uh, upper body injury. I think it's a shoulder injury. He was placed on short-term IR again. Uh, get well soon, Weiss. We could really use you. Uh, the next day, Saturday, the Wings got destroyed by the Maple Leafs, 4-1. They lost the season series, 3-2. to 
The only highlight I can say for the Wings in this one was Brendan Smith getting into a fight. Wasn't really a good one. He kind of got his ass kicked, but it's good to see Wings are fighting again. That's kind of something they've lacked over the years was a guy that would fight. But, uh, suckish thing is they lost. And that brings me to tonight. They played the Columbus Blue Jackets. Very defensive game here. Uh, they went to overtime, 0-0. Jimmy Howard was fucking amazing. Uh, as bad as he has been in shootouts, he was fucking amazing tonight. But, much like Florida and Toronto, they lost in the shootout. Of course! Alright guys, I promise that is the last time you will see the M. Bison clip for the rest of this video. Uh, you know, guys, this is really getting hard to watch. I mean, now the Wings have 42 points. They're three points ahead of Toronto. Uh, they're tied with Montreal for second place and one point behind Tampa Bay. They got a tough game this Friday against the New York Islanders. Luckily, we're at home. Hopefully, we can snap this, this drought. Uh, their last four games, they're all one and three with only four goals. Offense needs to show the fuck up, especially against the Islanders. This is not going to be an easy game. The Islanders have been a huge surprise this year, and they're not going to go down easy. So for the Wings, this is a must win. We need two points out of this game. We can't keep living off of OTLs because it's a tough division, and I want to win. We all want to win. Red Wings, start winning again. Alright guys, this is another thing I haven't been too excited to get to. The uh, Time for a little Pistons recap. Uh, they lost to the Trailblazers last week, which I expected. They fell to 3-19. There is a good spot to this though, a bright side. They beat the Suns, and they beat the Kings. To improve to 5-19. and Last night, however, they got destroyed by the Clippers, which is okay. I, I didn't think they would beat the Clippers. Uh, so they're 5-20. and 20. Pistons are 5-20. and 20. I think some trades need to be made. And the Pistons, I'm just, I'm just not looking. I'm just not seeing a playoff team in them this year. Now let's get to men's uh, Michigan men's basketball, which I have been dreading. Michigan lost to EMU, 45-42. That was my reaction when I first found out. I was beyond pissed. You know, I'm not going to pull any punches at this one, guys. Michigan basketball sucks. It really does. It sucks this year. Uh, and it went to show uh, last Saturday night, they got their asses handed to them, 83-50 to Arizona. Arizona's a great team. They're number three in the country. But Michigan has been a good basketball team in the past few years. Hell, they were in the national championship a couple of years ago. Now it just looks like they're just falling. I don't think they're going to be in the tournament this year. I think losing to NJIT and EMU kind of fucked their chances out of that. And uh, the fact that they got blown out by Arizona... I'm just not very optimistic for uh, Michigan basketball this season. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to give it to you straight. Well, guys, that brings another vlog to a close. Uh, this was not my best one. I uh, I apologize. It's just it's been a bit of a rough week as far as Detroit sports go. Uh, minus football, that is, and baseball. That's all I have for you today. Join me next week for sports vlog number 23. Have a good one, guys. This is Cujo0624.1, signing out.